Hi guys, in this episode I will summarize the storyline of the film Godzilla King of the Monsters which was released in 2019. This film is directed by Michael Doherty, and stars Kyle Chandler, Vera Farmiga, Millie Bobby Brown, Bradley Whitford, Sally Hawkins, Ken Watanabe, and many other cool actors. Okay, without further ado, let's start the story. In 2014 in San Francisco, there was a fierce battle between Godzilla and Muto. Meanwhile husband and wife Mark Russell and Dr. Emma Russell is searching for her son Andrew in the rubble of the building that died in the incident, while her daughter Madison Russell has survived. Five years later in 2019 Dr. Emma Russell watches news shows on TV reporting on the American public demonstrating to demand responsibility the Monarch Corporation for the many marine habitats that have become extinct due to Monarch's efforts to track the whereabouts of Godzilla who has never appeared since the last five years. Monarch also allegedly kept the discoveries of several other titans secret. Emma Russell then moves away with a tool called Orca. Madison Russell herself is now a teenager who contacts her father Mark Russell secretly. The next day Emma and Madison went to Outpost Monarch in China's Yunnan rainforest. After receiving the news about the vital signs of the Mothra cocoons that are about to hatch, not long after that was born Mothra, or in Latin Titanus Missouri which is still in the form of a larva. But because he feels threatened by the weapons around him, Mothra goes berserk by using Orca a sonar device capable of emitting frequencies that only Mothra and the other titans can hear Emma was able to calm the creature. Suddenly came a terrorist group led by Alan Jonah, a former British Army colonel and his men and killed all Monarch personnel, and then kidnapped Dr. Emma Russell and Madison Russell. At the same time, Mothra escaped and became a cocoon under a nearby waterfall. Elsewhere Monarch is tried by the Senate in Washington, D.C. to hold them accountable for the appearance of several kaiju or titans such as Godzilla, Muto and Kong. Monarch himself was represented by Dr. Ishiro Serizawa and Dr. Vivian Graham and Sam Coleman objected because they feel as titan or kaiju they are harmless and can even coexist with humans. Suddenly Dr. Vivian Graham gets info from Monarch's outpost in China that has been attacked. They also left for Colorado to meet Mark Russell who was Emma Russell's ex-husband. This Mark Russell is the creator of the Orca, and Serizawa needs his help to track down the Orca's whereabouts, where Serizawa believes Emma Russell and Madison are still safe with the Orcas in their arms. Mark is then willing to help Monarch find the Orca and his family. While on the way on the plane Mark Russell was surprised by the amount of monster data that Monarch found at this time, Serizawa then reveals that there are a total of 17 monsters, and is believed to have continued to grow since the appearance of Godzilla. Mark then asks why Monarch didn't kill the monster, Serizawa and Emma believe there is something good we can get from the monster's presence. Long story short they arrived at the headquarters of Castle Bravo. Castle Bravo is Monarch's flagship facility used to track and study Godzilla. Inside the headquarters of Dr. Vivian Graham informs about Motra's escape and attack by Alan Jonah. When everyone thought Alan Jonah was near the now cocooned Motra, Mark then denied it. According to him Motra was just an inducement. Alan Jonah must be aiming for a bigger creature. Especially him. Elsewhere in Outpost 32 Monarch located in Antarctica, seen Alan Jonah's entourage carrying Emma Russell and Madison landed. Then Jonah ordered his troops to kill all the Monarch employees in the facility. Alan Jonah then brought Emma Russell and Madison into the outpost in which there was a giant frozen creature, they call it Monster Zero. Alan Jonah and his army tried to resurrect the monster by crushing the ice and using Orcus to control the monster. Meanwhile at Castle Bravo Colonel Foster orders his crew to get ready, because apparently Godzilla is heading their way. Serizawa instead ordered to lower all weapons while Mark Russell suggested opening the shield. So Godzilla wouldn't see them as enemies, and after five years of disappearance Godzilla finally shows himself in front of Mark Russell and the others. Not long after that Godzilla left the place for Antarctica. Godzilla seems to be aware of the emergence of the Monster Zero. Monarch then followed to Antarctica on the USS Argo, where Alan Jonah found out about Serizawa and his team's arrival. Alan Jonah then ordered his troops to move quickly to raise the Monster Zero. Arriving at the outpost the Monarch troops immediately entered the outpost. In it they received a welcome from Alan Jonah's troops. Seeing his wife and child on the monitor, Mark Russell immediately followed him into the outpost. Mark Russell finally meets Emma Russell and her daughter Madison. Strangely Emma instead of running away from Alan Jonah he even forbade Madison to go with her father, and it was finally revealed that Emma Russell have worked together with Alan Jonah. Swiftly Emma then pressed the bomb detonator that managed to resurrect the Monster Zero. 
Emma Russell and Alan Jonah's team fled with the orca in their hands. Meanwhile the monarch troops are running to save themselves. On the plane Emma turns on the orca which can affect the monster. The monster is angry and is seen spout yellow lightning from its mouth. And moved closer to the plane that Serizawa and company were riding on. In the plane Emma Russell then turn off the orca and fled away from the monster. When Serizawa's group was cornered suddenly a blue light from a distance was getting closer. Turns out it was Godzilla. There was a fierce battle between Godzilla and the monster Zero. Meanwhile the group of Dr. Ishiro Serizawa was forced to get out of the plane that was damaged by the battle of the two monsters. Not only that Dr. Vivian Graham finally dies from being bitten by the monster Zero. Not long after that the mothership Argo fired a missile at the monster Zero. The monster then flew away from that place. The next day the Monarch team tracked the same Godzilla path as Emma's plane namely Outpost Monarch on Isla de Mara located in Mexico. It wasn't long before the Monarch team was contacted by Emma from one of Monarch's protection bunkers in Boston. Emma then reveals that she was forced to do this because she wanted to save the world. Emma intends to make a breakthrough to save nature, where humans are now in power by doing damage at will, so the population needs to be reduced by resurrecting all the titans controlled by the monarch using Orca. Once the population is reduced then he will control the titans and live side by side with humans. Something that doesn't make sense to Mark, because Mark believes the Orcas are not fully capable of controlling the titans, and even his efforts will make human civilization extinct. Elsewhere Alan Jonah shuts down outpost monarch's defense system on Isla de Mara, and Alan Jonah had Emma blame the Orcas for resurrecting the monsters that were there. Emma Russell looks worried because there are still many residents who haven't been evacuated in the vicinity. Emma Russell then decided to suppress the Orca, while everyone is being evacuated. Seen from the top of the mountain appeared a giant creature shaped like a bird. They call it Rodin, the god of fire. Rodin looked at the Argo monarch plane and immediately flew after him. Monarch also tried to lure Rodin into a storm in which there was a monster zero. Monarch finally managed to lure Rodin to meet the Monster Zero. The great battle finally happened between the Monster Zero versus Rodin which was won by the Monster Zero. USS Argo tries to save Raptor 1 which has an engine failure, but the Monster Zero is attacking them again. Luckily Godzilla appeared who immediately beat up the Monster Zero. A great battle took place in the water and managed to trouble the Monster Zero. Until Godzilla manages to destroy one of its heads. When a fierce battle ensues, the American Navy intends to kill Monster Zero and Godzilla by launching a prototype weapon called the Oxygen Destroyer. The weapon managed to injure Godzilla, but instead it had no effect on the Monster Zero, which then flew from the water. On the radar Godzilla is seen weakening and the biosonic waves disappear. Monarch thinks that Godzilla is dead. Monster Zero seems returning to Isla de Mara, seen one of the heads was cut off but it grew back right away. Then the Monster Zero was heard screaming and all the titans around the world responded to the Monster Zero's scream. The remaining titans rise up and wreak havoc around the world. Emma Russell is shocked to see what the Monster Zero is doing. It turns out that their resurrection was not because of Dr. Emma Russell, but rather the Monster Zero who claimed himself at that time as the King of the Monster. Meanwhile in China's Yunnan rainforest, under the waterfall Mothra's cocoons are seen reacting. From inside the cocoons slowly came out a giant creature shaped like a butterfly with a very large wingspan. Inside the Monarch's base, they wonder why the Monster Zero is immune to the prototype weapon and one of its heads can grow again. As if not in accordance with the normal natural order, one of the monarch scientists named Dr. Chen discovered the fact that the Monster Zero was not a part of the natural order but fell from the sky. Yes that Monster Zero is an alien. Monster Zero is an alien whose goal is to destroy the Earth not balance the natural order. According to legend the name of Monster Zero is King Ghidorah. Meanwhile Emma Russell is starting to realize that what Ghidorah is doing is not balancing the natural order but destroying the Earth, and has a plan to stop Ghidorah by broadcasting the Orcus over the loudspeakers in the stadium but Alan Jonah doesn't agree. Back at Castle Bravo, Mark Russell and his team admire at the beauty of Mothra. Serizawa also finally knows that Mothra actually intends to wake up Godzilla who apparently isn't dead yet. After being traced using sonar waves it turns out that Godzilla is still alive but very weak. Mark Russell then had the idea of bringing a nuclear bomb to where Godzilla was, and gave Godzilla the energy from the nuclear bomb, by using a submarine Serizawa and company set out to find Godzilla's location. While on the way Dr. Serizawa's submarine was suddenly sucked in by a strange current into the hollow earth. Meanwhile in Boston, Madison Russell who had listened to her mother's plan, intended to bring the orca to the stadium herself to stop the mess the titans made. Back on the submarine, Mark Russell and his team arrived at a cave in the sea located in the hollow earth believed to be where Godzilla lived. 
Dr. Serizawa then orders to take down several surveillance capsules to look for Godzilla's whereabouts, until they find statues of ancient human civilization there, civilization that they think is much older than the Egyptian civilization. Unfortunately their control capsules suddenly died due to the carbon dioxide and methane content in the place, but one of the capsules had recorded the apparition of Godzilla who was in the radiation source. Unfortunately their nuclear launcher system doesn't work, and Serizawa decides to volunteer to bring the nuke himself near Godzilla, even though there is a risk that he has to die from radiation. Serizawa dared to risk his life to help Godzilla, because Godzilla is also fighting and risking his life for the sake of mankind, and Godzilla is humanity's only hope at the moment. Elsewhere in Boston, Madison finally activates the Orca by using a loudspeaker from the stadium, which made all the Titans react and stop their attacks. In the sea Serizawa finally managed to activate the nukes by limping against the harsh radiation, seeing Godzilla looks at Serizawa, Serizawa also approached Godzilla and touched him for the first and last time in his life, and the bomb exploded causing a very powerful shock, the submarine that Mark Russell rode until it was pushed to the surface, Mark Russell together with the Monarch team then get on the boat to check what happened, a moment later they saw a whirlpool near them, then the figure of Godzilla appears with a larger size than before, Godzilla looked at Mark Russell and his team and immediately went over to Ghidorah, Mark himself returned to Castle Bravo and got some bad news, after the orca activated by Madison apparently lures all the titans towards Boston, because it assumed the signal of the orca as another predator. It wasn't long before Ghidorah arrived in Boston and destroyed the place. Ghidorah looked at Madison and chased after Madison who was carrying the orca. Lucky Godzilla arrived just in time to save Madison. Fierce battle rages on again between Godzilla and Ghidorah. Mark Russell who was looking for Madison's whereabouts apparently got the fact that Godzilla is receiving excessive nuclear intake, which will make it explode like an atomic bomb, until they have very little time to quickly find Madison. Long story short Mark Russell found Orca but he didn't find Madison. Meanwhile Mothra finally appears to help Godzilla by attacking Ghidorah, but his action was immediately blocked by Rodan who then attacked Mothra. The team duel finally happened between Godzilla vs Ghidorah and Mothra vs Rodan. The cornered Mothra managed to immobilize Rodan with his sting. Elsewhere Madison is apparently back home and struck down by the ruins of the building. Mark Russell then picked up by Emma and they both rushed home to find Madison. Madison herself finally managed to survive after take cover in the bathtub. Back on the battlefield, Ghidorah managed to bring Godzilla flying and then threw him down which made Godzilla helpless. Mothra who saw Godzilla helpless then helped by attacking Ghidorah, but unfortunately Mothra was destroyed by Ghidorah's attack, and the flakes enter Godzilla's body, but Godzilla looks still weak. Mark and Emma then fixed the broken orca and it worked. When Mark Russell and Madison got into the plane to save themselves, Emma Russell instead decided to bring the orca by car provoked Ghidorah to chase after him. Emma's car is upside down hit by the Ghidorah nuclear, and Emma lying on the street, when Ghidorah approached him came Godzilla with a very high level of radiation, until it burns melts everything near it, from within Godzilla's body emitted a very strong nuclear radiation that was able to destroy Ghidorah's body, from far away seen a very powerful explosion from within Godzilla's body, then seen Godzilla rising from the rubble and spouting nukes upwards, then unexpectedly suddenly the titans appear around Godzilla including Rodan who turns out to be still alive, the titans look submissive before their king, Godzilla king of the monster. In a post credit scene on Mexico's Isla de Mara, Alan Jonah finally finds Ghidorah's severed head from the fisherman who found it and buys it. While Monarch continues his research on Skull Island by showing an ancient painting featuring Godzilla and Kong, or at least it's their species fighting each other. And this is what will be the setup for the movie Godzilla vs. Kong. And that's the end of the storyline for this Godzilla King of the Monster movie guys. I hope you guys are entertained with the storyline that I bring, and always, thank you for watching.